and clergymen at various churches where Christmas services were held in Lagos to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. Musa Toliad reports. It was songs of praise, adoration, and thanksgiving for the birth of Jesus Christ, whom God sent to redeem mankind from sin. Special advisor to the president of media and publicity, Femi Adeshino, who joined others at the Four Square Gospel Church, said Christmas is a time to show love to mankind. It's a time of peace, a time of joy, a time of goodwill. And it's a time to share love and show love to people. And it's a time to believe that the future will be better. He has come to give us abundant life. And uh, all our leaders, first of all, I want to tell should please be committed to service for humanity. The prelate of the Methodist Church Nigeria, Samuel Uche, urged leaders in the country to imbibe the spirit of tolerance, forgiveness, and be their brother's keeper. Christmas is about willing sacrifice, selfless sacrifice. And Christmas gives us the message of caring for the downtrodden. The general overseer of the Vineyard Christian Ministries and the coordinator of the Christian Pentecostal Mission enjoined Nigerians to have faith in God and work for peace and unity of the country. Everybody should be on the same page of love. It's all about love, it's all about giving, it's all about releasing to other people, and that is the purpose of Christmas. We're expecting Christians to love God more, walk in righteousness, walk in holiness, and know that it's only him that can do it. My message to the youth is to refuse any form of distraction and work hard to harness the blessings of God in Nigeria. Christmas is a time of sober reflection and a season to rededicate selfless service to humanity. In Lagos, Musa Toliad. NTA News. Well, from Christmas, we now go to the update on fuel situation. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo has warned fuel marketers and operators of stations who are involved in hoarding petroleum products across the country to desist from the act in the spirit of Utide or be prepared to face the full wrath of the law. He gave the warning when he visited some fuel stations in Lagos to get first-hand information of fuel situation in the metropolis. To the Psyche reports. The vice president, who was accompanied on the visit by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachuku, said it is unfortunate that some fuel station operators stay hot products despite assurances by the NNPC that there is sufficient petroleum products to go around the country during the U tide and beyond. He appealed to Nigerians to remain calm as government is doing everything possible to ensure that petroleum products are made available. The vice president and his entourage, who were also at the Owando filling station in Lekki, urged Nigerians to stop panic buying. He stressed that government will not allow some unscrupulous individuals holding the products to get away with their nefarious act as relevant agencies have been directed to deal decisively with perpetrators. So the issue of availability is not so much done. There are issues of logistics, the issues of trucking. When there's holidays like this, a lot of truckers travel out. You don't get the sort of delivery you want. We need to coordinate between DPR and NPC properly so that people are not selling stations as people are opening stations in a difficult period of difficulty. But where people are just involving themselves in just racketeering and profiteering unnecessarily, we need to take action on those. So um, people should just bear with us. For more than two years now, we've been able to have a system where this wasn't a problem. Uh, there's a little bit of sleep. It has happened. We're working on it and we're giving it our best. You can see bringing the vice president here uh, on the instructions of the president is a testimony of how worried everybody is, making sure things return to normalcy. So we're working around the clock. NMPC is doing the same thing. If they are able to work today, tomorrow, and uh, on Boxing Day, I think all this thing will be over. It's just for the dealers to, to be very uh, proactive. It will be recalled that the Department of Petroleum Resources sealed up some filling stations across the country for engaging in sharp practices. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Well, that does it from Lagos. It's back to you, Kenya, for more on Nationwide. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Ademola. We now take you to Lafia Nazareth State from where a report says that hundreds attended denominational church services across the state to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and pray for peace and prosperity of the nation. Abigail Bashi, who captured the mood of the worshippers, reports that church leaders and joined people of the state 
to always strengthen issues that unite the people. Scriptural prayers and rendition of praise songs characterize church services. Clerics and congregations in unison appreciated God for his love and protection over the years. Messages also dwelt on peace, reconciliation, and respect for leadership. Similarly, clerics admonished Christians to imbibe the virtues of love and sacrifice as exemplified by Jesus Christ. Deputy Governor of Nusra State, Silas Ali Agar, who worshipped at Equa Good News Church, Akwanga, urged the people to focus more on unity and development of the state and Nigeria. Meanwhile, in his message, Governor Omaru Tanko Almokura enjoined Christians to reflect on the lessons of the season, which include love, sacrifice, and forgiveness, as well as extending the hand of fellowship. In Lafia, Abigail Ashash Labashi, NTA News. Christmas is regarded as a sacred festival for Christians as it is to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Observed 25th December, it is celebrated with great enthusiasm and gaiety in most parts of the world. Many in the faith feel it marks Christ's birthday. At the same time, others don't observe the celebrations, believing that Jesus did not sanction it. Justin Bem Unye in this report Six answers from both sides demarcated by this thin line of faith. The birth of Jesus Christ, a symbol of hope for mankind and the fulfillment of God's plan, as believed in Christianity. Commemorated as Christmas today, history indicates that the celebration was not among the earliest festivals of Christians. The exact date of the birth of Jesus Christ was unanimously fixed some two centuries after his death, as the Catholic Church began to establish its tradition. Today, Christmas is celebrated on 25th December in Catholic, Protestant and most Orthodox churches. The question of concern for many sincere believers is, should Christmas be celebrated and how should a Christian celebrate it? When uh, people celebrate Christmas, it is not in disobedience to the scripture. Though the scripture didn't say do it, and I don't think God is offended by us doing it. The truth was that uh, when Christ was born, there was celebration. But this particular event changed the narratives of everything in the world. So we have right, full right to celebrate Christmas, the day my Savior was born. Even though the Christian faith is one body, some members of the faith have refused to be part of the celebration of Christmas at all. The scripture offers silence as uh, to the day that Jesus Christ was given by so the Bible didn't tell us specifically when Christ you know was given by so Esma should not be made a test you know of faith in as much as it is not found in the scripture and then there is another reason uh, from the historical facts because when you go back into history you will discover that you know Esma has a you know pagan origin it is related to pagan origin like I said earlier on, it's not just a religious inclination we are doing. It is relationship. God's intention is not that Jesus will be a religion. It's relationship drawing men back to himself. I believe as many that believe that Jesus Christ was born, supposed to be happy, that he did have been set apart to celebrate him. It's not taking anything from Christendom. It's not taking anything from holiness. It's not taking anything from, you know, from righteousness, from all Jesus Christ stood for. Regardless of the controversies on dates, times and seasons, and other doctrinal reasons, the bottom line, some ministers of the faith have pointed out that the birth of Christ is its significance. 
adding that God stepped into mankind's lost condition and through Jesus took the burden of sin that was destroy mankind upon himself for human sins to be forgiven. This mass is a time for sober reflection. It's a time for love. It's a time for realization. Men lost God's glory, lost the path of righteousness and holiness. But Jesus brought us back. But since we have the world of us taking that as a day to celebrate Jesus Christ, let us do it with all sincerity so that Jesus Christ himself will be glorified. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. We now link up with Oga Chukuka in Benin as she tells us how Christians celebrate Christmas in states under the zone. It's over to you, Oga Chuku. Thank you, Kenne. Compliments of the season. Christians in Edo and Ekiti states have marked the birth of Jesus Christ with church services and party for children, including the internally displaced persons and orphans. Woodwork Obong Archibong reports that the messages captured centers on love and tolerance for one another. We seem to be having issues at our Benin Network Center. Let's now continue. You're watching Nationwide on NTA Network Service. Our first break beckons. We will be back with more stories after that. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism, as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony, are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom. Peace and unity. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Slavery is an evil practice abolished all over the world over 200 years ago. But today, human traffickers are selling human beings as slaves in Africa. It is your responsibility to make sure that you and the people you know do not fall into slavery. Don't believe fake promises of jobs abroad. People went to say Libya, Italy. Italy no use you when they carry me on top water. Four days now they love me for inside house, no food, no water. I nearly die. Now God, when may heaven on earth, now save me. If you get one letter for Nigeria, you get junior one, you say you don't get papa, you don't get mama, that make you come out. I beg go, go they do farm work, you better pass best when enter road. Don't accept to travel to Europe through the Sahara Desert. You may be walking into slavery. Don't be a slave. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Thank you so much for inspiring greatness in me, Alaji. Alaji? <laughs> I am just rehearsing, dear. Rehearsing for what? A life-changing and inspiring meeting. With who? Alahaji Aliko Dangote. <laughs> With the FG and I app and just 500 Naira, you stand a chance to meet one-on-one -on -one with Alahaji Aliko Dangote, Africa's richest man. And win cash prizes. As the Be Inspired meetings give Nigerians a chance to meet one-on-one -on -one with icons. To qualify for the draw, download FGNI app from Apple Store or Google Play Store. Go to the Be Inspired section and follow the instructions. Cost of travel and accommodation of all winners within Nigeria will be borne by the organizers. Terms and conditions apply. Proudly supported by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture.
It's that time of the year when we appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses, and above all, you, our esteemed viewers. Together, we made 2017 great. Together, we shall make 2018 even greater. That's why we say thank you. Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Welcome back to Nationwide. President of the Senate, Abubakar Bukala Saraki, felicitates with Christians as they celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. In a statement to mark Christmas, Saraki urges Christians to use the occasion to pray for unity, peace, and prosperity of the country. He also called on Nigerians to rededicate themselves to the service of humanity in line with the true teachings of Christ. Saraki uses the opportunity to assure Nigerians that the legislature would at all times work towards ensuring Nigeria's rightful position in the League of Nations through relevant legislations and timely intervention. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bose Mustafa, says the federal government is consolidating on the stability in the nation's economy by enhancing the living condition of Nigerians. He started this in Lokoja during his official handing over of the National Inland Waterways, Niwa, where he served as the managing director before his present appointment. Solomon Ayedein reports. Hereby hand over the mantle of authority to Barista Kavadi Edan as the acting managing director of the the handing over ceremony was with mixed feelings, especially for the management and staff of the National Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA. Secretary to the Government of the Federation was NIWA's managing director for 15 months before his present appointment about a month ago. He listed some of his achievements in the authority to include pursuance and sustenance of the planned concessioning of Onicha River Port, in-house maintenance dredging of the Lower Niger River at the Ajakuta Bridge stretch of the river, strengthening of the enabling laws establishing the authority via a bill at the National Assembly, establishment of due process and rehabilitation of basic infrastructure at Niwa headquarters, among others. While thanking President Muhammadu Buhari for the opportunity to serve, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation promised to remain a credible and reliable ambassador for the actualization of his mission of rebranding Niwa. General Manager, Legal Services and Company Secretary Dan Lad Ibrahim has taken over as the Acting Managing Director of NIWA in Lokoja, Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. The vision of the federal government in providing more efficient shipping services and making business easier for Nigerians is becoming a reality as test running commences at the inland dry port in Kaduna State. Oyinaya Kalwaka reports. With about 6 million people, Kaduna State, created in 1967, is a metropolitan as well as a cosmopolitan industrialized state with over 80 commercial and manufacturing industries. With this development, citing the inland dry port in Kaduna State is said to be a right step in the right direction. With 98% completion, the dry port has the capacity to handle 29,000 containers annually. Virtually all facilities are ready as test running has commenced. A lot of containers are going out because the people are already embracing this uh, uh, project. They are happy. This is a Madubello way, one of the busiest streets in Kaduna, and this is where most shops of importers and exporters are located. We are here to find out what is their impression about the new dry port. It's very, very okay. It's an improvement. This is the development we are looking for because to help to deliver goods at the right time without any problem. The expenses of traveling to Lagos 
to get goods. You have to pay for a way bill. And you have to pay for your own transport to, to go and get your goods. So I think if they open it here, it will really do us a lot of good. It will boost the economy of Kaduna and also reduce the level of our joblessness in the town. Sitting on a five hectares of land with provision for expansion, the only facility left to be done is the road leading into and out of the port, which the state government promised to complete soon. Expected to be commissioned early 2018, the inland dry port has 4,000 square meters capacity warehouse. Oyinaya Kalo Oka, NTA News. Benin is now ready for us. Merry Christmas to you there, Ogachukuka. Thank you for rejoining us, Kevin. Compliments of the season. Christians in Edo and Ekiti states have marked the birth of Jesus Christ with church services and party for children, including the internally displaced persons and orphans. Woodwork Obo actually reports that the messages captured center on love and tolerance for one another. At the New Covenant Gospel Church, the General Superintendent, who is also the National President of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Reverend Felix Omobude, said, The birth of Jesus Christ brought peace which Nigerians should strive to replicate wherever they find themselves. No matter how powerful, no matter how rich, no matter how anointed you are, you need someone else. Let's build a community of peace and good neighborliness. The minister in charge, Central Baptist Church, Reverend Olu Aibonomo, enjoined Christians to discover more about Jesus and reorder their worship and devotion to him, just like the wise men did. Everyone on the of Jesus on, on pastor basis as Lord and pastor Savior. The Associate Priest of St. Augustine's Catholic Church, Reverend Father Antonio Combe, asked people to reach out to others in love, which is the essence of Christmas. In the meantime, the Edo State Government has celebrated with orphans and inmates of the internally displaced persons camp in Uruguay, where we are not a local government area of the state. <laughs> The governor said if he eats a spoon of rice this season, the people here should eat two, not one. Meanwhile, government offices, financial houses, as well as some shops have closed in Benin Metropolis to observe public holiday to mark Christmas. From Adokiti, Ayodeji Okunja King reports that as part of his social corporate responsibilities to the people of the state, NTA Adokiti has organized series of programs in the spirit of the season. In Benin, Udwakobong Achibong, NTA News. Similarly, the World of Life Bible Church Worry has held this year's annual Children's Jubilee Christmas Party in a grand style. Jude Aweke reports. It was a rich display of the nation's rich cultural heritage as thousands of children once again converged on the headquarters of the World of Life Bible Church Worry. <laughs> Among activities lined up for the event were the ball game presentation by the toddlers, dance rendition, Bible recitation, songs ministration, as well as a drama sketch depicting the need for children to always obey their parents and shown back company. For children like this, it's incredible what you can do with them. Whatever you teach them now, whatever you tell them today, they believe you. They are so innocent. They are I look and I see the greatness of Nigeria. I celebrate you children. Exciting and wonderful. I'm happy that they care about us so much. From Worry in Delta State, Jude Awake, NTN News. 
Edo State contingent for this year's Christian pilgrimage to the Holy Land has departed Benin City. Governor Gordon Obaseki, in a message to the pilgrims, warned that government will not tolerate any form of misconduct that would put the state in a bad state. The governor, whose message was delivered by the director of sports in the state ministry of youths and special duties, Pastor Obakpolo Osage, taxed the pilgrims to conduct themselves in compliance with the rules guiding the spiritual journey. He urged them to use the platform to offer prayers for sustained peace, unity, and progress for the states and the country. Is there anyone among you who hopes to stay behind in Rome, Greek, or Israel? and serve as a slave in another mass country, let me sound a note of warning that government will not tolerate as comment. State Chairman Christian Pilgrims Welfare Board and leader of the delegation, Bishop Oyeride Kure, said there is a decrease in the number of pilgrims compared to that of last year in view of series of screening towards ensuring that credible persons make the list. We have a contingent of 19 consisting of 12 families and 7 males. The pilgrims are expected back in the country on the 3rd of January 2018. In other news, Edo State Government has commenced the payment of 20,000 Naira monthly stipend to four sets of Libya returnees in the state. Governor Godwin Obaseki, who was represented by the chairman, Edo State Task Force Against Human Trafficking, Professor Yinka Omorobi, said the stipend will be paid for three months. Good luck in Naini reports. Expectations were high converged on Idia College in Benin City to receive their stipend, which the governor promised to pay them monthly. When the first set of returnees arrived to the state, Chairman Edo State Tax Force Against Human Trafficking, Professor Yinka Morogwe, said the payment commences after the state government completes the processing of the data of those captured in the first phase. However, the process witnessed some obstructions when some of the returnees, due to lack of patience, went on rampage owing to the fact that they were yet to receive theirs. The good news is that before they left, we were able to resolve everything very um, amicably and they got alerts. A lot of them started getting alerts. While some of the returnees expressed their appreciation to the state government for the gesture, others appealed to the state government to increase the amount, noting that they were ready to participate in the vocational training program. My really concern is for the government to add something to it. I want to, I need money, not be, and, 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 and I got my hand work, but... Recall that the government swung into action to reintegrate its indigents in the wake of global outreach in Benin. I am good luck in any NT News. And as our contribution, the news continues in Abuja. Good afternoon. Thank you, Ogachuku. It's time now to join Fatai in Ibadur for more reports. Hello, Fatai. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Kene. A warm welcome to Africa's cradle of television, Ibadur. Christian religious leaders have called on Nigerians, especially Christians, to rededicate their faith in Jesus as the only power that can do all for them and the country. Chair Clarice made a plea during sermons marking Christmas services across Ibadan. Correspondent Oye Inka Folanomi reports. That was the mood of the congregation at Leaders Chapel International Ajara Ibadan as they joined their counterparts around the world to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Presiding Pastor Alex Adio and other ministers of God in their messages urge Christians to always radiate the love of God, be committed to the message of humility, which the birth of Jesus Christ in the manger signifies, and use the season of Christmas to take the message of hope to the world. The purpose of Christmas is for us to be reminded of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though it's the back, so that we live a righteous life before the Lord, not just for merriment, not just for drinking and celebrating again, but it's just part of it, just to take stock and take step in our Christian life. The coming of Jesus Christ to this world brought peace, brought peace. 
peace of mind, brought hope, brought faith, and brought everything that a man can talk about. The congregation demonstrated their happiness and gift of life as they wish one another Merry Christmas. Moving on, Osho State Government is supporting the dreams of young people in that state to have a better tomorrow by creating a conducive learning environment for them. This was the observation of the wife of Osho State Governor, Mrs. Sherifa Tarekbeshola, while hosting children at the end of the year party in Oshobo. Olapode Arewa reports. The month of December is synonymous with Christmas carols and end of year parties. This year, again, wife of Oshu State Governor, Mrs. Sherifat Arabeshala, organized a party for the children who had fun with various games, dancing, and food. <laughs> wife of the Governor, Mrs. Sherifat Arabeshala, said celebrations such as that provided opportunity for children in the state to relax. She told them to face their studies. Education being the key to a successful future. We should not be led in the continued propagation of the attitude of women who are being in our individual homes. Why for the governor would dance with the you're still watching Nationwide on the NTA. Time for pause for another round of commercial. More news after that. Is this a right or a privilege or sheer arm twisting? Driver, it be like say we're not gonna see anything take chop to do. Because now social staff and award and world cup food this bus. Alas, how will they earn daily bread if we all get our bus rides for free? Staff and award, another rib cracking episode of Professor John Bull comes your way this week to make you think and laugh like never before. Keep a date with us. I want to know the kind of staff we want to be. Police staff, army staff, or criminal staff, which one will be? Special unit. Special unit. Hey, go, go, go. Hey, hey, hey. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Over and out. Brought to you by GLOW. The largest data network. GLOW. Unlimited. With the new Star Times Classic Bouquet upgrade, there's something for everyone with our exciting new channels. Upgrade to Classic Bouquet and enjoy more thrilling blockbuster movies for adults and some for the whole family. Engrossing wildlife documentaries, cartoons for kids, nail-biting telenovelas for the ladies, The absolute hottest American TV shows on Fox and all the breathtaking moments in football and other sports. But that's not all. With our Star Times Christmas 50% offer, you can enjoy all this and much more on over 70 channels just for you this Christmas. Pay for one month and get 50% off the second month on any bouquet and enjoy the best Christmas with Star Times. Star Times, enjoy digital life. The time has come for Nigeria to take her rightful place in world sports with the first national grassroots sports festival to discover and prepare sport talent and develop future world champions for Nigeria. The festival date is 3rd to 10th March 2018. The venue is the National Stadium Abuja, packages A and B. This is the opportunity for you to promote your brand through the festival. For broadcast sponsorship, which include live broadcasts, highlight shows, and TV fans show, contact the chairman, chief coordinator, Angelo Peter I. Elosia, or Nick Oyishi. Organizers, Grassroots International Sports Academy and LOP Worldwide Television, endorsed by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. Broadcast partner, NTA. Thank you for staying with us on Nationwide. In Ondo State, civil servants have been paid the four months' salary arrears owed them but are expecting December pay. Bomi Oke okay. tells us more. 
Those from level 8 to 12 were paid 75% of their earnings. Workers on grade level 13 and above collected 80% of their salaries. We just received part payment of the part of 2016. And the amount given to the state is enough to pay about just one month or about 85% in the local government. The salary did not even come the time we expect it to come. And at the same time, it's like the governor has decided to give us 85% of the arrears, you know, that's last year's salary. The workers appealed to the state government to, as a matter of urgency, pay up their December salaries to enable them to celebrate the new year with joy. We have not received December. I want the government to pay our December salary. It will be remembered that President Muhammadu Buhari had directed the release of Paris Club refund and asked state governors to pay all salaries owed to civil servants before Christmas. In Akure, Olubumi, OK, NT News. The agrarian community of Chibok was known only to the people of Borunu and the Varans until Boko Haram's attack and abduction of about 300 schoolgirls brought it to limelight across the globe. About four years after, how is the community faring? Adebola Brusklin Sunday was in Chibok and has the situation report. When Boko Haram invaded the Chibok community in 2014, residents were dominated and humiliated. The lucky ones fled to neighboring communities. Some even climbed mountains to cross borders to Cameroon. Thanks to President Buhari-led administration, which came to their rescue and degraded the Boko Haram. Before President Muhammadu Buhari assumed office, Residents of this community and many others in the northeast were at the mercy of the insurgents. But today they say the story is different. Markets is moving. The residents have returned and life is back to normal. Before the administration of Buhari, many of our people are sleeping outside. But now with the help of Nigerian Army forces, in fact, we are very grateful. All our people are now sleeping at their own houses. In fact, business is moving. We thank Buhari and we give him long life and prosperity. Amen. Now we are happy. So we are sleeping good. No fear, no anything. We put person to Chibok, to Dambua and Uba Askra. So no problem. We have security now. The local government secretariat that was raised has been renovated for government business. The president, in fact, Yakubu Keki, one of the community leaders, said, one good thing deserves another. I've been in Abuja for more than six times to see the president. I couldn't make it because they, they, they refused to allow me to get into even near to the villa. But coming to the present government, the old door is open for me. I single-handed, without writing anything, I am able to see the Mr. President and even the Vice President. So I really appreciate the effort of the government. It's an open door government. He's a leader, whereby there's no, no single man in Nigeria that loves Nigeria to stay one than Buhari. So that's the reason why we, we voted for him. And we still in need of him to come back again for the eight years. Because if he did not come for the eight years, I don't think what you have planned will not be able to be benefited. The serene atmosphere is a clear indication that peace has returned to the northeast region of the country, a fulfillment of one of APC's campaign promises. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Sudan and Turkey have agreed to establish the Strategic Cooperation Council to increase trade ties following the visit by the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to Tatum. This and other stories coming from Ado Adamo also on the global scene. Thank you and compliment of the season. We start on African bilateral relations as Sudan and Turkey have agreed to establish a strategic cooperation council and to increase trade ties following a visit by Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to Khartoum. Erdogan arrived in the Sudanese capital on Sunday as part of a three-day trip that also includes stops in Chad and Tunisia. 
The two countries are working to increase their bilateral trade from its current value of $500 million a year to a billion and subsequently $10 billion annually. Authorities in Vietnam are preparing to move a million people from low-lying areas along the south coast on Monday as typhoon approached after it battered the Philippines with floats and landslides that killed more than 230 people. Typhoon Tembe is expected to slam into Vietnam late on Monday after bringing misery to predominantly Christian Philippines just before Christmas. Vietnam Disaster Committee said 74,000 people have moved to safety from vulnerable areas, while authorities in 15 provinces and cities were prepared to move more than 1 million orders. To Central America now, where the president of Guatemala, Jimmy Morales, said he has given instruction to move the Central American country's embassy in Israel to Jerusalem a few days after his government backed the United States over the city's status. In a short post on his official Facebook account, the president said he decided to move the embassy from Tel Aviv after talking to Israel's prime minister. On Thursday, 128 countries defied Trump by backing a non-binding UN General Assembly resolution calling for the United States to drop its recognition of Jerusalem as the Israel capital. And that is it from here. The news continues. Thank you, Adamu. Nigeria's Falconites intensify training ahead of next month's crucial World Cup qualifier against South Africa as Commonwealth champion Odunayo Adekoroye joins Indian side Mumbai Maharafi for the 2018 Indian Professional Wrestling League. The Indian Sun is our guide on Sports Update. <laughs> 